Hello everyone, welcome back to the interview. I'm your host, Susan Lee McDonald. World-class recording artists are coming from all over the globe to perform here in Korea. I'll be interviewing the amazingly talented Rachel Yamagata, and she's been coming to Korea multiple times to entertain and perform for her wildly enthusiastic fans. I'm so excited to get to meet her today, and so let's go interview Rachel Yamagata. If I could take you away Pretend I was queen What would you say? Would you think I am? Everybody's got the way I should feel And everybody's talking how I can be in love But I wanna, I wanna be in love, be in love for real everybody's talking how I can be in love But I wanna, I wanna be Want to be your everything. Hi. Hi. How are you, Rachel? Great to see you. You too. Welcome to Seoul. Thank you. It's so great to have you here. Oh, we're having fun. Yeah. <laughs> I'm super psyched that you've agreed to do the interview. I know you've got a super packed schedule. Oh, well, it's my pleasure. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Yay. So you've got a lot of stuff going on. You've got your concert and you've got mm. uh, just a lot of people that you're meeting here too, right? Yeah, I'm meeting up with old friends too. We've made so many on these trips mm -hmm. that it'll be... Uh, It'll be exciting. We've uh, had already a couple visits out to Hongdae. And, and fun. Yeah, it's endlessly fun. Do you like Hongdae? I do. Yeah. It's so cool, right? I love it. Like I lots of fun and it's really dynamic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, here is the entrance of where we're going to go in. So that's, yeah. was it bad okay. that I tripped? <laughs> no. Rachel, we can finally sit down and have our interview. Yeah. Are you ready? I'm ready. Awesome. So what brings you to Korea this time? Uh, more shows. Three shows here and mm -hmm. um, just continuing to play live. Uh, I have a really great supportive fan base that I am just amazed keep wanting me back. So anytime I can come and play, I will and mm -hmm. I uh, have started to really find a nice collection of friends with the people we're working with and see a lot of returning faces at the shows and mm -hmm. I just love it so I'll come back anytime. Nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah Korean fans uh, if they are uh, 
super fans. Yeah. They're like fanatics. I love it. <laughs> I love fanatics. They're great. How yeah. has it been when you've performed at the concerts and what are some of the reactions from the fans in-house? Uh, well, I'm always surprised when people know the songs, which I love. Um, I didn't realize I had a song that was uh, popular called Baby Your Love and the first time I came I didn't realize that um, people knew the song and I had almost forgotten to play it and I had called somebody up on stage to help sing sing with me and everybody knew the song and I, I didn't know until after I'm like how does everybody know this <laughs> song and um, so it was really exciting to um, see now with new releases that uh, that it's continued mm -hmm. and um, the, there's really like no language barrier which you might expect mm -hmm. and people um, are so complimentary about uh, the lyric themes and being touched by what I'm writing about. Mm -hmm. um, so that's always uh, really, really lovely to see. Wonderful. Yeah. yeah. When we listen to your music, one of the things that crosses my mind and thoughts about why Koreans in particular really love your music mm -hmm. is that in Korea there's a concept of Han and I'm not sure if you're familiar with it. Mm -hmm. Han is like this uh, intense uh, emotional um, uh, sadness and mm. emotional depth it's like a, a, a sadness that's waiting to be released. Mm. And a lot of the Korean music mm -hmm. is played in kind of the minor keys and, uh, and very uh, dramatic yeah. in the traditional sense, mm -hmm. too. And as you might see, the Korean dramas are really yeah. uh, <laughs> dramatic. Oh, all the commercials. I watch them, I'm like, he's crying. <laughs> so, like, it is <laughs> angst. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. Yeah. And so maybe it's that. Yeah. Uh, element of the Koreans that they really identify mm. with your absolute vulnerability with your lyrics mm -hmm. and uh, and I know someone uh, who loves your music dearly but when she just went through a breakup had a really hard time listening to it because yeah. it just felt like sure. she was reliving it. Yeah, people are both ways. Some people mm. are like it helped me get through something mm. um, and other people are like, I have to tread carefully because it's, it's heavy. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why in my shows, I tell a lot of jokes. Like people are very surprised that I'm a happy person. Mm -hmm. they, I think they think that naturally I'd be very upset. And my being able to write, write it out mm -hmm. is my release. So then I can actually mm. be pretty happy and lighthearted <laughs> in life because I'm getting it out on, mm -hmm. uh, through a song and I think um, people can react that same way. It can be mm -hmm. a release uh -huh. or it can be too heavy, <laughs> a little too much. Yeah. yeah. I like the fact that you take, uh, take yourself not too seriously too, mm. um, yeah. and yet you're able to reach such kind of depth and, mm. and, and there's such richness in a lot of the, the song and the melodies themselves and Thank not you. only the lyrics, that, uh, that even if you took out the lyrics, which mm. of course are important. Just yeah. listening to the music itself, yeah. there's like a healing quality to it. Thank you, yeah. thank you. Yeah, I'm a big fan of um, journeys in songs and music mm. and feeling like it's taking you somewhere. Um, you know, I love, I have a kind of come from a music theater background. Mm -hmm. um, I did a lot of high school musicals and studied for half a second in college and mm -hmm. um, there's something about the drama of a musical mm -hmm. that lets you just take something to the limit. Mm. So in my own songs, um, s every now and then there'll be just these massive orchestrations that kind of sink into you and are dramatic in that way. Mm -hmm. And I just love that. Mm. Um, yeah, big fan of that. <laughs> Rachel. I hear that you have collaborated with uh, the photographer mm. Kim Jung Man oh, yeah. for uh, cover art. Is yes, right? yes. Tell me about that. Oh, I was so lucky. Well, if you want to know why I have such a fan base in Korea, it's really, I, I would say, 85% due to his efforts to promote mm. me. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, he's just been an amazing, amazing friend and mentor and inspiration mm -hmm. and I first met him a few years back and he came to one of the shows and something about uh, 
his work and my work, our perspectives, just fell right into place. Mm -hmm. And I think he, as, as people, we both understand this deep sadness that can exist in the human life and mm -hmm. our particular mm -hmm. souls, and, but also this eternal quest for beautiful experiences and beautiful mm -hmm. things. And his, because uh, I had not seen his work before meeting him, and oh. then when I saw his work, first of all, I was like, thank God I didn't know or else I would have been too intimidated to speak <laughs> with him the first mm -hmm. time I met him. But then I was just so uh, taken aback and so moved by what he did and the emotion he captures with mm -hmm. um, his photographs. And I just hit the jackpot with him <laughs> because he, we came up with this idea to do a collaboration of uh, artwork mm -hmm. and using his photographs with each one of my lyrics and it's a special edition mm -hmm. and I mean it just it blows my mind that um, I should have such a supporter mm -hmm. um, in somebody so fabulous in, mm -hmm. in his own right and so I feel uh, very very lucky yeah that's fantastic I think about how it might have been Now, switching topics just a little bit. Yes. Um, your last name is yes. Yamagata. Yamagata. Right? Yep. Uh, it sounds like a Japanese name. It is. And, yeah. uh, uh, so tell us about maybe your family. Uh, yeah. yeah um, your ethnicity. That's my father. Mm -hmm. My father's Japanese. And my mother is German and Italian. Mm. Um, and I also grew up with two step parents from a very early age, like I think two. My parents divorced when I was two. Mm -hmm. um, so super early on, they both got remarried. Um, my stepmother, uh, who has since passed, but ha oh, was sorry. just the most vivacious, blonde, blue eyed Southern Belle, mm -hmm. smart as a whip, like crazy smart. Um, and my stepfather is Jewish from New Jersey mm -hmm. and like. Grew up playing in bands and, and um, you know, was just a sweetheart. But I always felt like having essentially four very strong parental figures in my life from such different backgrounds mm -hmm. um, was always what made, made sense for me to take this career path because I'm especially looking at the, the, what, the deep connections that, that bind us all together mm -hmm. on this spiritual level, you know, mm -hmm. no matter what our background is. Mm -hmm. I think um, I really got the good fortune of so many different strong personalities mm -hmm. around me mm -hmm. all the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's my, uh, uh, my, my family in, mm -hmm. a, in a nutshell. And then my extended family are all just really interesting people. And, um, some great musicians. Mm -hmm. uh, my cousin is a, an amazing bass player. My mm. uncle is a French horn player with the New York Philharmonic and the New York City. So Ballet there is and some kind of musical and creative influence within your family. There is. And family. Yeah, yeah, there really is. Yeah. And especially um, with my mom's side growing up in Woodstock, mm -hmm. you know, she used to tell me this is a great place of musicians. And mm -hmm. I'm like, ah, whatever, you know, because mm -hmm. I wasn't doing music at the time. And now I'm like, this is amazing, all the history here, and like, yeah. who's around, and, and, and the, uh, the music that's going on. So it, it came full circle in a way that I didn't expect, because yeah. we didn't talk about music. I mean, there mm -hmm. were some musicians, but it wasn't like, I wasn't on that path. And I've heard from also some other interviews that you've done that uh, you are quite a spiritual person. Mm -hmm. And uh, with that, being spiritually uh, inclined, uh, do you find that that also influences your music a bit? Oh, I think so, all the time. I mean, in the way of 
I sometimes don't know where songs are coming from. I don't mm -hmm. know that I am even having a part of I think I'm a, more of a channel or a funnel for some things that happen. Mm -hmm. um, Elephants was like that. Mm -hmm. um, I think I've lately started to wonder about, um, you know, my lyrical messages like do I, I'm, I'm, I feel, I'm sort of rambling now, but I feel fortunate that people do find comfort in what I write about because I do sort of explore the darkness of relationships a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I have a song called mm -hmm. Keep Going, which mm -hmm. is the first sort of, I call it like a kumbaya song because mm -hmm. it's very lyrically obvious Ooh. of like, let's connect and, and be kind to one another. And mm -hmm. I've yes. never been able to write a song like that. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if I'm evolving to the point where I can, because on a spiritual level, that is always my message. It's mm -hmm. like kindness mm -hmm. and love. And like, why do we keep messing it up when we don't need to? And mm -hmm. how do we become more of our authentic self in everyday life? Mm -hmm. Like, let's break down the walls that we have that mm -hmm. prevent us from expressing that all the time. Um, I don't even remember, remember the question. <laughs> oh, yes. I, it does influence your, your spiritual. <laughs> it does. Yes. yes. The answer is yes. You know, it's, it's so wonderful to, to hear your laugh. You've got such a oh, hearty, like, thanks. happy laugh. Mm, and, uh, and I'm sure that during your concerts when you are telling the jokes and you are kind of laughing mm -hmm. on stage too. Your fans are really loving I, that side of you. I have fun when I crack myself <laughs> up. Like, you know, it's always great when people laugh, mm -hmm. you know. I thank God they laugh at the shows, you know, when I'm trying <laughs> to be lighthearted. But there are times where I can't stop laughing mm -hmm. just because it's... You have to laugh. People would kill themselves at my shows if they just sat there and listened to the music the whole time. You need those breathers mm -hmm. in there. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Now, you've got some really interesting stories of how some songs have come about. And you earlier just said that you sometimes feel like a channel or funnel yeah. for songs. Yeah. Maybe like a medium. Yeah. Um, but I heard that when you composed over and over. Yes. From... Uh, is it that was on the um, elephant's record, elephant's record. Yeah. Uh -huh. that you had some uh, otherworldly assistance. There was this um, the studio we were working at in upstate New York mm -hmm. was totally haunted. They said I think thirteen ghosts in that place. Thirteen ghosts. Thirteen ghosts was the the rumor, the mm -hmm. exact number they said, um, and it was really beautiful. It was one of the most beautiful studios. It was set up with these. You know, 30, 45 foot cathedral ceilings wow. and big passageways and halls and way on top of this mountain. So you had these, there was a sunset room and a sunrise room of just Ooh. windows and you could be out there. But so anyways, I knew, and you could feel the energy and I was up wandering around because I'm not an insomniac, but I often get up super early in the morning mm -hmm. and I'm just, that's my time. And I heard I swear to God, I heard this trumpet hmm. playing, but none of the musicians had showed up yet. We were just starting the record, so I knew no one else was around. And um, wait, so you heard a trumpet sound when no one else? No was one in was the a, studio. No, I was you. the only one because you were. It was like you had rooms living in the studio mm -hmm. as well. Um, so part of it, one building, you know, you just walk down the hallway and you open the great doors, and there's your tracking room. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm coming out of my bedroom, and I'm following the sound of this trumpet and I go into the main studio room and I was just floored by it. It was this beautiful melody and I'm So like, it wasn't like a car honking outside? No, no, that. no, because we were way up on this mountain. I mean, it was a melody of a trumpet. So I sat down at the piano and I was just sort of calmly invited this, whatever it was, to like keep going with that and mm. started writing out the line. and. That became the introduction to over and over. There's sort of an instrumental piece that leads to that song. And I just sat there and wrote it right wow. there. So I, I basically plagiarized this <laughs> ghost trumpet player. And but I was like, why not? Yeah. <laughs> you know, so so um, I mean who knows? Mm -hmm. It could have been the wind. But whatever it was was yeah. like inspirational.
When was it really when you decided that you wanted to do music as a career? I, it really, you know, happenstance has that name for, for a lot of reasons and a lot of my path leading to music, um, it was, it was not planned. I mean, it was, I would, I started playing piano when I was 12, but I didn't last more than a year in lessons, mm. but I just played for fun and I mm. loved it. Um, when I joined Bumpus in college, it was because I went to see them. I didn't even see that much live music at that time. And I went to see them with a friend of mine. I was just like in awe of their electricity on stage. I was like, I just have to be a part of this. I'll mm -hmm. play tambourine. Or, and I really did kind of stalk them for a long time. I'd like bring them <laughs> coffee and like mm -hmm. just, I was just around. I guess I was sort of a groupie for mm -hmm. them. And, and then I was around enough where they needed a third voice on something one day. Oh. And I just sort of like, I can sing. And, and it sort of progressed that way. You were with the record label for a while and now you've yeah. gone totally independent, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> Completely independent. It's it's my new um, I think my new breakthrough that I'm I'm working on. Mm -hmm. You know my my trajectory of career has always been uh, really like a roller coaster: extreme mm -hmm. highs, extreme lows. Things that um, I learned very early on to just stay a bit even with all of it mm -hmm. because you can't predict any of it. And um, I was thrown into it in such a way um, where like I had I had never played solo mm. live ever mm. my I played one show before my first record showcase and then wow. I played one New York club probably the size of this room and my second was Madison Square Garden oh opening goodness. for David Gray <laughs> so it was by myself you know on mm. um, on stage playing his piano. So I was thrown into that, you know, get ready and go. Like there's no, like, just do it. So I, I had that. And on the business side, um, I've had been on so many different uh, permutations of major labels that mm -hmm. it was just like, wow. You know, I've had um, uh, four years between records when I've had mm -hmm. one in my back pocket, like why can't, why can't I get this out, mm -hmm. you know? so. All of that has been, um, it shows me you just can't predict what's going to happen. Um, so part of going independent was to regain a little bit of that control, mm -hmm. at least over my releases and touring. Um, mm -hmm. Because if I'm not actually making records, putting them out, and playing them live, then the purpose is defeated for having mm -hmm. a career in music. And I was... Um, I'm sure you missed also being able to I do did. a new record and whatnot. I did. And I think the, you know, the record industry in general has changed so much. Mm -hmm. And while I was on major labels, it was really going through a lot of implosions. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody was trying to figure out how do we do this with the internet, with downloading, mm -hmm. with um, record sales being... Uh, used to have been such a big part of the financial success for mm -hmm. labels, um, that got turned on its head and mm -hmm. it affected everything. So um, uh, that was that had a lot to do with me taking the reins and figuring out. Mm -hmm. um, well, if it's taking me four years to get a record out on a label, I'm not going to do any worse <laughs> if I do it myself. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, and it's been great so far. Mm. A lot of work, but I really, can imagine. really great. Yeah. You won't let me. You won't let me. I don't want to say goodbye. I just want to give it one more try. But you won't let me. You won't. Your last album was uh, Heavyweight, and you have garnered some success with Heavyweight, yeah. as well as all of your other albums before. Yeah. And I'm curious, what was kind of the uh, impetus for making Heavyweight? Mm. Uh, well, 
to, to talk about the record before that, Chesapeake, mm. it ties in. Um, that was my first independent release, mm -hmm. and I had gathered a bunch of my friends that I'd worked with over the years, three producers working on this mm -hmm. record. John Alasia was the producer, but I also had Mike Fiola, mm -hmm. uh, Kevin Salem, and Michael Chavez, all of whom mm -hmm. I've worked with who have produced me at some point. And, and John Alasia was your producer for Happenstance For Happenstance, too, right? so mm -hmm. we reunited. So you didn't know how that was gonna work because you've got three people who, or four people I guess, really, who'd been at the helm of a recording that I'd done. Mm -hmm. um, so I was wondering, is this going to be a disaster? Are you going to have like <laughs> power plays? Like what's mm. going to happen? And it was a love fest of absolute wonder. Mm. You know, everybody just um, loved the entire experience. Wow. And something about um, doing it like that uh, led to a lot of uh, a lot of music, a mm -hmm. lot of songs. So. Uh, to I heard that the production of that was actually done in his house, is that right? Oh yeah, we, yeah? We, he has a house Tell us about that. <laughs> right on the Chesapeake Bay, mm -hmm. hence the name. And um, uh, we were sleeping on couches, we had microphones in bathrooms, I had a yellow banana tent on his lawn that I was sleeping in. That's that was awesome. my room because there were so many people. Mm -hmm. um, we had the drums set up in the kitchen so we'd be tracking drums and somebody would be making dinner for everybody. And it was really like camping with your your best buds. That's awesome. Um, and it just, it lent itself to a very like fresh feel mm -hmm. in, in the music. Um, but something about doing all of that uh, I think it gave a lot of energy to that record, Chesapeake. Mm -hmm. So when we finished it, I still had a couple of these songs, which ended up being on Heavyweight, oh. which were still very much a part of me, but they wouldn't quite have made sense on Chesapeake, because that mm -hmm. was like a particular moment of capturing this energy. Um, but I didn't want to lose these other songs that mm -hmm. I had. Mm -hmm. um, so that was sort of the... Uh, impetus behind releasing Heavyweight ah. as an EP. It was like, mm -hmm. here's the here's the me that you know and might be longing for. Mm -hmm. um, I'm still, you know, that that's still a part of me. It mm -hmm. just it wasn't right for this particular record, well, and it could stand out. Chesapeake seems slightly brighter, it slightly does. happier. Yeah, like you were in a happier place or something. When there is. There was that. something about that. I think it was because I had so many years of feeling so challenged by the business side mm. of uh, doing it. I felt like this freedom of well, there's nothing. To left to lose here, you mm -hmm. know, we're in new territory, we're creating the studio, mm -hmm. everything's, whatever we're bringing to the room is what we're going to get, so mm -hmm. there was such a, like, looseness and release about it, mm -hmm. and I was happy to make music again, I was mm -hmm. like, I've got my best friends here, and we're, we're playing music, and we're looking at this beautiful water and mm -hmm. we're you know having these experiences so I think a lot of that infused itself and I remember oh, yeah. seeing one of the videos with the rabbit and the tiger yeah 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 isn't that funny <laughs> that's so cute my little brother directed that video actually yeah he's a um, film director and comedian and actor in New York and um, we were just trying to figure out something we needed two animals that if they were in love but you just knew it, there were too many differences, too many internal differences to work, and we're like, a bunny and a tiger, what's mm -hmm. gonna be? Uh, you know, it's, it's destined to, to have a bad ending. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's a sweet yeah. video. Yeah. Kids, kids love that video, they're like. Is there something from the Chesapeake album and Heavy 8 album that you might be able to maybe sing a little bit for yeah, us? Yeah, I could, I could try. Yeah. It was a late <laughs> night last night, but um, mm. you did have a concert last I night. Could, yeah, I did. We've had uh, two so far. Tonight is our mm -hmm. last night. Mm -hmm. um, 
but I could sing a little verse from Heavyweight. If, sure. Um, uh, let's see. <clears throat> you think you are such a heavyweight. It don't mean nothing at the end of the day. There is not a thing here left to break. I won't fail nothing. There is nothing you could say to make me feel like I should walk away. I'll help you bear your heavy weight. You think you are such a have had some really well-known songs, of course, uh, throughout the world, but also in Korea. Mm -hmm. And uh, you, know, you said earlier, um, you know, BB, uh, Your Love, yeah. uh, being so popular mm -hmm. around the world and here too, and duet. Um, if yeah. you had to choose between maybe those two songs or any other song yeah. that you've ever sung, oh, okay. um, what would you say is uh, maybe your top three? Um, you know, Elephants is one of my favorites. I love that um, song too. I really like, I, I like the poetic nature of that mm. song. Um, for me, that was one of the most, um, more images in the lyrics that had subtext and, and sort of layers of meaning. And, um, and I just had never written a song like that. So that one I, in particular I really love. And um, I could sing you a couple of lines. I'd love to. From it. Yes. it may, might make a little more sense. Um, but uh, let's see. Um, if the elephants have past lives, yet are destined to always remember, it's no wonder how they scream. Like you and I, they must have some temper. And I am dreaming of them on the plains, dirtying up their beds. If the elephants have past lives, it's more like I, I wrote it when I was running down this mountain, and I was going through something very, a it's no very painful, painful breakup, and it was inspired by this card. Um, this uh, person had sent me a card with an elephant on it, and we had talked about elephants never forget. They have these amazing memories. He was essentially saying, don't forget us. Um, so the word elephants and that idea of an elephant um, never forgetting um, sort of stuck with me. But the lyrics just came out of nowhere. I mean, I was literally in the woods doing a little hike, a little jog. And I had the whole song written by the time that I was at the bottom of the mountain. I had to race up so I wouldn't forget myself what the lyrics were. But it traces this sort of animal comparison to how, um, you know, with animals, there's no uh, agendas. It's like, you know what you're going to get. Mm -hmm. Love, death, um, flight pain, you know, whatever it is, like, and, and there's something, um, I guess something very beautiful and simple and uh, base about that when you're thinking about human emotions and we, we mess up all these basic emotions mm -hmm. with our agendas and our psychology of it. And so anyways, that particular song is sort mm -hmm. of a, poetic comparison mm -hmm. to a relationship in that mm -hmm. way. It didn't, I, I had no control over it. Mm -hmm. I didn't set out to make it that. You know, we've all been through great relationships, not so great relationships, yeah. and great breakups, and well, I don't know if we can say a great breakup, but friendly <sighs> breakups friendly and breakups, bad yeah. breakups. Yeah, sure. But there are times where you just don't want to remember yeah. your your ex yeah. <laughs> yeah. and when 
when there's that type of reminder, it is so painful. It's very painful. And yeah. the fact that you can write it so poetically mm. you know, in your lyrics, you know, in that song, and with the beautiful melody with Thank that. Thank you. Um, it's, it can be really hard for yeah. the persons who are listening to it who've just gone through that. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's hard for the exes, too. <laughs> when they hear it, they're like, uh-oh. Like, <laughs> I already have my, uh, my current boyfriend. His sister was so cute. She's like, please don't write a song about my brother. <laughs> Like you're good, but what am I gonna do? I'm like I gotta figure something out. Now you can't think so, about the end before. I know. You know, yeah, I know. It can go on for as long as it yeah. can go on. Things yeah. are quite beautiful. Yeah. And you can't regret anything either. That's another big thing with me. Is like, people. I think they often wonder. I get asked like, why do you think you're so unlucky in love? And I feel so lucky in love. Like it. Just because you're not meant to be forever with somebody, mm -hmm. I feel like, I mean, what a great um, connection to have. When you're in love, the, all mm -hmm. your barriers are down. You can mm -hmm. really be mm -hmm. um, your most fragile mm -hmm. uh, and truest self. There's that potential. Yeah. Um, so I don't regret any of, of mm -hmm. them. Yeah. 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 With with your collaborations with people like Mandy Moore, Dave Matthews, and, and other folks, uh -huh. um, and uh, especially with your last album, um, you've collaborated with some interesting folks too. Mm. Uh, yeah, there's, uh, you know, I have a friend of mine, Mike Viola, mm -hmm. and he and I write a lot of songs together. Mm -hmm. um, I really connect with him. He's very much... Uh, loves the music of the 70s, mm -hmm. the classic songwriters, and um, certain romantic progressions that really move me. So whenever mm -hmm. we sit down together, um, we always come up with something great. And he was, um, he's been in several bands in the US, and he's mm -hmm. also written for a lot of movies, um, mm -hmm. Get Into the Greek, and mm -hmm. Walk Hard, and different, um, different films. That Thing You Do, I think, was another one. Um, so he's always great. and. Um, Another favorite songwriter uh, collaboration that I work with is um, Dan Wilson, mm -hmm. and he um, he worked a lot with Adele on her last record, mm -hmm. and he's a very um, just a brilliant, sweet, sweet guy. So, um, in terms of writers, I've been very, very lucky. A lot of your Korean fans uh, have enjoyed seeing you, uh, you know, throughout your various visits to Korea, mm -hmm. and I'm curious if you're planning maybe any collaborations with some Korean songwriters or I, singers? I in the would future? love to. I mean, I, it's certainly on my bucket list of wishes that I, I would love to really explore. And um, I have a complete obsession with MC Sniper. Mm. I love him. <laughs> so I would really love to collaborate with him. I think that might be really interesting, and um, I've started to do some collaborations with, uh, there's an artist in Thailand, and mm -hmm. there's a German artist, and I work a lot in the U.S. with different people, mm -hmm. so I'd love to expand that and do something with um, some of the artists in Korea. Wonderful. Yeah. You know, Rachel, it's been so fun talking with you. Me and too. Uh, later, uh, we're going to be following you to Yonsei. Yeah. Um, but uh, I think that your fans are awaiting you, and I know you've got a lot of preparation to do beforehand. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so we're looking forward to, with your permission, to maybe see you with your rehearsal and maybe behind oh, yeah. the stage. Yeah, perhaps? come see the behind the scenes. Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll try and make it interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just you being yourself is interesting enough. So. Perfect. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much again for being on the interview. And before we um, let you go, if you could say what music means to you, mm. what would you say? Um, connection. I think music is soul touching, you know. Yeah, it means so much. Heart, heart, soul connection. Mm. 
After the interview, I followed Rachel to a concert hall on a university campus in Seoul. I knew that she was performing the acoustic versions of her songs arranged in diverse styles at the concert for her Korean audience, and I was really anticipating it. How was the reverb guitar issue? Did you tell me it was being funky? Uh, I think so, but... Would yeah. that affect this, maybe? Maybe. We can maybe turn the tone down. She went back and forth playing the guitar and the piano and keyboard and singing into the mic to check the equipment and the sound quality. The rehearsal went on for more than an hour to make sure that everything would go smoothly during the actual concert. It's a little easy to warm up. You know what, Pete? I'll take a hair more of my vocal, just the hair. As soon as the rehearsal was wrapped up, I went backstage to the dressing room to see her. Okay, I'm here right in front of Rachel Yamagata's uh, waiting room, so I'm going to be going in and seeing if she's able to chat for a little bit. Well, Come last, in! Last two weeks. Hey! Hi! Hi! Hi. How, are How are you? Mm. Great to see you. Yeah, fine. <laughs> Our amazing, uh, Susan, nice amazing. amazing artist from Germany. Oh, yeah. wow. We played together in Seoul. Uh, yeah, 2011. 2011? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I've heard your stuff. Yeah. Is yeah. that it? <laughs> God, it's been a long yes. time. Four years already? No, it's three. Three, three years, years. Yeah, three yeah, years. yeah. About three years. Making a comeback to Korea. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she cool. had a hit his concert last uh, yesterday in oh. Gwangju. In Gwangju, yeah. In Gwangju, oh. yeah. How was it? Oh, it was nice. Nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you come to Korea often? Yeah, yeah. It's my eighth time, I guess. Oh, wow. Yeah. Multiple times yeah. to Korea, both of yeah. them. Yeah. yeah. You should interview him. It's very... Yeah, I definitely yeah. have to. <laughs> so what brings you guys together today? Well, uh, I'm um, Ray. For me, she is one of the muse, you know, my muse, mm -hmm. for for probably 10 years now, mm -hmm. from, from her first album. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, I didn't know her, so I. Uh, one day in Japan, in Tokyo, mm -hmm. I went to the Tower Record. Uh, usually, I bought some of the CDs, mm -hmm. and the first time I, I picked uh, the Rachel Magata. Who is this girl? What what is this? Then um, I fell in love uh, with her music and mm -hmm. for her lyrics and every stuff. Mm -hmm. I have chance to uh, hear to she came to Korea to concert, so mm -hmm. we became friends, mm -hmm. you know, just, uh, just like uh, what can I say, soulmate, mm -hmm. something. Uh. You know, she gives me a lot of uh, inspiration um, uh, through her lyrics and music. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I pass a lot of time to listen of her music. How often do you get to see each other on well, these trips? Yeah. Yeah. Once, yeah. Every, I think once every two years, yes. surely. Yeah. <laughs> the iconic yeah, photographer Kim Jong Man, who is known to shy away from public appearances, and German singer songwriter Maximilian Hecker paid Rachel a visit. I know. <laughs> <laughs> The venue was starting to get crowded with her fans, who have been dying to see her and hear her in person. The packed house provided further proof of Rachel's stardom in Korea. The concert finally began. As soon as
as she took the stage, she charmed the audience with her laid-back personality and mesmerized them with her ethereal voice. Rachel became one with the audience, presenting diverse music styles from beautiful ballads to folk and alternative rock on the guitar and keyboard, and moved people's hearts with her rich, emotional voice. The concert reached its climax with the song Be Be Your Love, which is familiar to almost all Koreans. She displayed her mastery of musical instruments, the melodies of which blended perfectly with her powerful voice. She is a true artist with a deep understanding of music and her personal strengths as a singer. audience singing along to the final song of the night, the dramatic 90-minute concert came to its conclusion. Singer-songwriter Rachel Yamagata has a strong fan base in Korea who admire her for her luscious and soulful voice and emotional music. And I, like her numerous fans here, I can't wait for her to return to Korea very soon. Oh,